What is up, everybody? Guitar Rock360 here back. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of talking a bit softly because it's kind of late. So I'm just going to do whatever's worst, whatever's best for me to do this video. So, anyways, if you've seen some of my videos of me doing a lot of Goliath racing in Forza Motorsport, uh, Forza Horizon, sorry. Um, I've been using a lot of the same cars, the F50 GT. But I just want to show you guys what is the best cars in Goliath in Forza, Forza Horizon 1, if you guys are wondering. So, the first one that like, I highly recommend to race is, like, race on Goliath is the Honda NSX. Or in the game, which is called the Honda NSX NSX RGT. This car is, was, it's actually, the NSX stands for New Sports Car in Experimental. It was equipped with a 3.0 liter V6 with the VTEC engine, which is which the VTEC technology came from around the 1980s. I have not I don't, I did some research research on this one. And not a lot of the 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 first generation of what you see in this picture doesn't really have any specifications because uh, I the only thing I could find was the second generation, which is the ones that are made today. But the recommended class of upgrades, I suggest you put. The recommended class I would put, uh, I like to to do on this car is S. So I highly recommend you do do S class or R three. Um, I like to, which you, you should in, uh, upgrade the intake manifold, the crankshaft, the flywheel, turbo, or or you can add a turbo or supercharger. Um, in first of all, in Goliath, it is what really focuses on the track is not just speed. Cause just because you you start off on the highway doesn't mean speed really matters to you. Um, Cause in Goliath you have lots of alternating turns, so for your chassis and all your and your brakes and stuff like that and, and all your suspension stuff, you need racing shocks, springs and dampers, sport or race tires, racing sway bars or anti roll bars in the game, and your drivetrain is is optional. Because um, in in my NSX, I I don't have any drivetrain upgrades, so every, all the transmission on that car is is pretty much all stock. But it's all up to you. It doesn't really matter what class you guys put up. I just highly suggest you put it on S class because the NSX does handle better in Goliath on S class or maybe a low R three. The NSX that is on in my game is actually hooked up to S class 650 so it's kind of in the middle between the lower S and the higher S classes so but I really highly recommend you upgrade it to a high S class or a low R3 so but either of those two uh, it's the best hand one of the best handling cars so that's the first car that I, I highly recommend you upgrade to when you want to race the NSX in Goliath not a, it's not a bad, bad, bad car. I rate it at a nine out of nine out of ten. Okay, so like I said, um, I rated it at a nine out of ten for, for good handling, because my NS, in my opinion, my NSX, like my NSX, wasn't really fo really focuses on speed. It was really meant to be focusing on handling. So, like I said, rated nine out of ten, and then that that last one was speed so one out of ten for speed because my car wasn't really meant to be go to go that fast but as far as handling goes it's it really walks on a dream another car that's really good on Goliath is the Lexus LFA to be honest with you this is I don't really use the LFA that much on Goliath the last time you saw me driving the LFA was my recent video one of my recent videos of me racing with my some of my friends in Red Rock to Dam and that was rated as an R3 but the LFA that I usually is am using is the one that's dressed up as Anna from Frozen and that one is an R rated as an R2 and that car does pretty decent on the track it, it's not like a it's not a um, big big thing for me to drive because I rarely drive it up till this time um, as far as handling goes like I said it does it does handle pretty decent on the track it, it just it did suffer a lot of understeer which I didn't really like 
according to what um, uh, what motor I know head to head I think for Motor Trend said when they were doing a head to head against the NSX and the LFA um, as the turning goes it's like when you are racing the car without any any electronics on it's like it's like the rear wheels aren't talking to the front wheels the LFA is is one big one big giant squirrel um, and it does require a lot of good driving skills to in order to get this car in control but once you do get that control and you know what you're doing the LFA just handles the track really well but like I said I rarely drive the LFA on the track on Goliath so um, I suggest you if you want to drive it if you want to race it I suggest you upgrade it to what to an R2 and add some sp at a front splitter and a rear wing in order to keep that in order for better handling and more stability and unfortunately my LFA doesn't have a front splitters and it, it does handle pretty decently without it if you want to if you want to get into a, a better performance LFA without having to pay any upgrades that much I suggest you buy yourself the LFA Nurburgring which is the DLC pack in Forza Horizon uh, once you do buy that one, and that one does handle a lot better than the regular LFA because the, the Nurburgring has its own pre-made, pre-tuned um, uh, spec specifications and ha it does have its built-in um, front splitter and wing. So everything on the Nurburgring is all for you. Now you may be wondering, what is a four-wheel drive vehicle has to makes it so good on Goliath. Like in other words, how could a four-wheel drive car be good on Goliath? Because you're gonna say that oh, most of the cars in Goliath that I race with that are four-wheel drive tends to not be good on Goliath. But however, cars like Lamborghini, I am not gonna be including the Sesto Elemento on this one because I never had one, never driven that one. And I don't even know what how well that thing does on the track on Goliath. So. This first Lamborghini that I want to show you guys is the Lamborghini Gallardo. And it's not pronounced Gallardo, it's pronounced Gallardo. Gallardo. It's it's a, it's Spanish and or Italian. The two L's is pronounced as a Y. So Lamborghini Gallardo. Um as you know my my as you may recall my previous video where I did the the return of Judy Hopps uh, video and that's the same Lamborghini Gallardo that was actually racing the same Gallardo as this one that you see in this picture except it was a police car version uh, Zootopia style anyways um, the Lamborghini Gallardo uh, codename LP570-4 is equipped with a 5.2 liter V10 engine which produces 560 PS or 412 KW 552 horsepower at 8,000 rpms at 540 nm 398 pound by feet by foot well, that's that's what it says on here 6,500 rpm of torque top speed at 202 miles an hour pretty darn fast for for a low end guy or for a low end Lamborghini um, handling on this car is pretty pretty okay it's it's not the best one though. it's at least it's a lot better than the LFA um, but the only thing that I don't like about its handling it's because it's four-wheel drive and when you have four-wheel drive you have you have that partial front-wheel drive in there and as we know it front-wheel drive cars tend to understeer a lot than what rear-wheel drive cars do or at least what four-wheel drive cars do um, the Gallardo uh, if you know how to how to handle the car, it does handle pretty darn well. I mo I raced this car, raced the Gallardo on Goliath for the the Zootopia police car Gallardo for like qu quite some time, and and I did mess up on a few part few parts of the track, but it does aside from that, it does pretty well. Like it was well behaved and it did well on the track. It it was it, it it's not like you're gonna fight it when you when you punch that throttle like when you kick your foot hard on a throttle the car feels like it's just wants to just wants to go it doesn't want to like sacrifice its 
it just sacrifices understeer, but like most of the time, like the car is way settled and like, and when you make a turn, like it just wants to go. Like that's how responsive the Gallardo is. Uh, I, I've actually did tune that up to, to be set up for Goliath Racing, and I just love the way, and I put turbo charge in it turbochargers and it. it sounds beautiful with turbos so yeah so my up uh, my recommended upgrades you I suggest you max it out and put everything except a differential don't put a racing differential um, go ahead and add yourself a rear wing for for better rear traction and add a front splitter if if you want add a front splitter if you like for better handling on the turns to me, I, I really don't want to put a front splitter on my Gallardo is because it with even without it it does pretty it does do well. Like does pretty well on without it. Um So yeah, the Gallardo, it's a pretty okay car. I rate that as a nine point five out of ten. Um for for best for best top speed in handling. Um, it does top out of two, 230 miles an hour if you have the if you added some more weight with the rear wing or the front front splitter um, if, if, if you don't put any of that upgrade you may go up to 245 to almost 250 miles an hour which is pretty darn fast for, for Gallardo's so there you guys have it there's the Gallardo for you I know um, uh, before I continue I know I'm kind of like uh, well up to date with my car facts here right now is because I did a lot of research on these cars so pretty much almost anything here was not gonna be as accurate what you do on the game but I just want to show you some little bit of facts on the cars and tell you why this car this these specific kind of cars are pretty good on the track so there's the guy order for you so I'm gonna move on to the next car Another Lamborghini that I like to drive on the track is the Lamborghini Murcielago SV. This car is equipped with a 6.5 liter V12 engine with 670 PS, 493 KW, 661 horsepower at 8,000 RPMs. It can achieve a 490 uh, pound foot of torque at 6,500 RPM. Power to weight ratio is 429 brake horsepower by long ton. It's equipped with 15 inch carbon ceramic disc brakes with 6 piston calipers up top with a and can achieve a top speed of 212 miles an hour. And that's that's all stock. So uh, handling on this car is twice as better than the Gallardo. This car may not be the fastest car on top of speed when you max it out, but and it only goes like around 222 miles an hour top speed and it red lines so not a very fast car as far as um, modern day standards go modern day top speed standards go but as far as handling goes I actually added a front splitter on this car without and I just put the regular wing on which you can, as you can see on this on this picture it has the regular wing on the back and that's what I did on in the one in the game just except I just put added a front splitter. I did max it up, max out the whole car, and I just added a front splitter, and I did not put a differential on it, like a racing differential on, on my Lamercy Lago. And before I continue, this is the same car you may saw on my on my way before clips of me racing. It's my first episode of the Judy Hops one, which I was racing with this one dude. In a, I don't know what car he was, he was driving, but this is the same car that you saw when I did like that first episode of Judy Hops, when I did the Lamborghini Murcielago race. And when, if you if you did see that video, the car really did handle really well. Um, it wasn't like the, it was like it was like the Gallardo. It was able to like handle the turns pretty well. It was pretty responsive. And it did sacrifice a little bit of understeer every now and then, but, um, but, but other than that, it was like I mean, it was really, really, really fast on the turns. I can actually manage to keep up a steady 130 to 140 mile an hour turns, even at, at chicanes on the track. 
So best car for handling is, I rate that as a, a 9, uh, 9.5 out of 10. Same thing with the Gallardo. Um, just hopefully in the sooner, in the near future, I may change the guy at the Lamborghini Murcielago up for a change. So this car does pretty well on the track. Um, not the not the best top speed. Like I said, Gal Goliath doesn't really focus on top speed, even though you're on the highway. Because, um, like I said, you start off on the highway, and that's where most people bring out their Bugattis out. Because <laughs> they think they're going to win because they got that uh, three-mile head start on that highway. But technically, you're not. the game isn't over yet. The track is not over yet. So... Both the Gallardo and the Murcielago do do handle well on the dirt, and yes, Goliath does have a few dirt sections, and these two cars can handle the, the dirt sections pretty well. So, obviously they're four-wheel drive, but um, you can even my some of my two-wheel drive cars in Forza Horizon can handle the dirt sections of Goliath pretty well, but not as not not as better with four-wheel drive cars like the uh, Gallardo and the Murcielago. So there you guys have it. There's some Mercy Lago for you. So I did a little bit of comparison with the Gallardo because it does have that similar performance with the Gallardo. So there you guys have it. There's some Mercy Lago for you. Well, say hello to my Goliath competition racing car. This is the same car that I race on Goliath a lot of times. This is Jamie, or also known as the McLaren F1 GT. And yes, I did call my McLaren F1 GT Jamie, and she's a she's a really pretty awesome looking McLaren F1, especially for a Goliath competition car. Okay, the McLaren F1 GT is powered by a BMW 6.1 liter V12 engine, which can produce a 9.83.61 brake per torque, and as far as power to weight ratio, and it does. Can go. It can go zero to six. No, sorry. It can achieve a top speed of two hundred forty-two miles an hour, which is the one of the, which is for a fact the fastest naturally aspirated hypercars out there. Until the Bugatti Veyron had to, had to, smack McLaren's butt just to, add another ten or fifteen miles an hour to give bring it up to 253 miles an hour for the Veyron so kind of a shame for McLaren for having um, <laughs> a losing car for the fastest car but to be honest with you guys this is going to, still going to be the fastest naturally aspirated cars out there because the modern day supercars today that can go over 200, 230 miles an hour are pretty much turbocharged or supercharged so not really much on naturally aspirated so this is uh, may not be the first but certainly not the last car that McLaren's ever made was a naturally aspirated car so first naturally aspirated car to be hit 240 um, let me pause the recording here real quick I need to do something okay so the McLaren F1 GT is in in my ratings, it's the third of the best handling cars out there in Forza Horizon. Reason for this is because from this car is like I said, the reason reason for this is this car is equipped with a unassisted vented disc, Every, and I didn't max up everything except a differential. Um, this car, even 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 for its for his sleek aerodynamic, aerodynamic characteristics, and I max it out. Put some, put a front splitter and a rear wing on this thing. This car drives like, <laughs> hence the name, an F1. That that's how fast this thing can this thing can handle the turns. I can literally, the tunnel section of Goliath called Tunnel Charge. I can literally almost hit 200 miles an hour in in one of those turns in Tunnel Charge. This car. It's amazingly fast on the turns. This car, this car is like unbelievable. Like, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I'm sp speechless. This car is amazing. And um, if you put a front splitter on this car, it does handle pretty darn well. Even without it, it it still handles pretty much almost the same. 
that's only if you have the rear wing on your back because if you don't have it you're gonna wheel spin a lot even if especially when you don't have traction control on you're gonna wheel spin a lot because you're adding too much weight on the front when you have that splitter that's why I'd have the rear wing to to increase the weight to the back so you can have rear more rear traction so the McLaren F1 GT is a is a best out of the best uh, handling cars out there so I rate that as in third place and I rate that as a 10 out of 10 for both handling and speed this car is amazing so if you guys don't even have a McLaren F1 GT in your Forza Horizon garage I suggest you pick take out the car and um, <laughs> get it for buy it for four million dollars Forza Horizon money um, unfortunately I did not <laughs> well actually fortunately the good thing is I won the McLaren GT that I've actually raced with a lot with Jamie that I, that I raced with. Um, I won that car. I did not buy it. I won the car during a, like an online online racing session. So, but if you want to buy if you want to buy the McLaren F1 GT, you have you're gonna be paying four million dollars. Zuto um, what? Not Zootopia money. Forza Horizon money like. <laughs> So yeah, pretty pretty expensive, but once you do buy it, it's well worth it's well worth for the money, and it's a, it's a really good handling car. All right, before I want to move on to the to the number one best handling cars in Goliath, I just wanted to add, just wanted to uh, give an honorable have an honorable moment with the two of the baddest. <laughs> Uh, the baddest of the bad of Goliath race competition racing. The Ferrari F50 GT shown on the top and the Pagani Zonda R shown on the bottom. These two cars are not really the fastest cars on the track, honestly. The F50 GT can only ha top speed at around, can reach a top speed at 200, I mean 200, 190 miles an hour on, on the freeway. So not a very not a really fast car, as, as modern day standards go. And the Pagani is on the R it can only go two hundred and over two hundred twelve to two hundred fifteen miles an hour, so not a tremendously fast tra fast car. But these are really meant to take the turns really well and I'll explain why. These cars are actually pre tuned to race or to be on to be driven on a racetrack. And these cars are so darn fast on the turns, you can literally almost hit 100 over 150 to almost 160 miles an hour in a single turn. That is not including very sharp turns like 45 or 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle turns. So, but aside from that, these cars are like these cars can really dominate the turns. Like it can, it can like dominate a Conan's a CCXR with a bad driver in it and a Bugatti Veyron SS with a bad driver as well. These cars, these two cars can literally, literally melt, put Bugattis and, and like, and Conan's eggs with, with drivers who are full of, who have, like, let's put it this way, it can, it can totally dominate or totally like shatter the living crap out of tryhards in Bugattis and Conan's egg CCXRs and a lot of the four-wheel drive vehicles who for people who think that faster cars can always win races or something like that but these cars can totally shatter the living crap out of them so if you see if you see these if you see these cars pass you they're gone that's it <laughs> so best handling these are the 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 best handling cars but these are not the number one best handling cars and that brings you to uh, brings you to the number one best handling cars on Goliath the Joss JP1 yes this is the number one best handling car best handling car in Goliath. Sorry for the little short pause there. <laughs> um, tell you the truth, I actually never driven Jaws JP1 in Forza Horizon, but I do have a friend of mine, uh, Venoraptor, also known as Angel Solosia, in Xbox Live. 
um, I've seen one of his videos that that he sent to Atomic Blaze 23 of him doing the hot lap in Goliath. And when I saw that video, this car was, he was driving the car like nothing. Like you, like you can, this car is so pretty darn fast. It does, it does redline at a certain amount of certain speed, but when you, when it goes through, it turns this thing like just turns like it's so responsive. It handles like the Ferrari F50 GT. Um, <laughs> It's nothing to you cannot underestimate this car, and especially for for an Australian car. And this is literally Australia, Australia's first first supercar, and and for just a just for a Australian car, even just the first has the best handling car. Are you are you serious? You gotta be you gotta be kidding me. This car is so almost impossible to almost mess up around. Yes, you're still gonna mess up. And this car really doesn't want to bunny hop at all. When you hit bunker, which is the 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 dirt section, one of the dirt sections in Goliath, once you pass Beaumont, this car doesn't really want to bunny hop. If, if, if you do that, if you attempt to do a, a bunny hop, you you're going to uh, extremely bottom out and this car really doesn't want to behave at all um, according to what Vino says he said that the car does not want to bunny hop whatsoever it just doesn't want to do it uh, so yeah obviously it's a freaking <laughs> racing car it's not designed to do it's not supposed to soak up really bumpy terrain like dirt or gravel but Aside from that, it's the best handling car, and I unfortunately do not have the DLC pack for it. I need to have the VIP pack or the season pack for it. But if, but trust me, I've seen Vino, my friend Vino Raptor, racing this car, and this car totally domi dominates it. Even my McLaren F1 GT certainly cannot keep up with this outstanding, monstrous top speed and handling. I did miss a few cars on on the one of the best handling cars in Goliath but uh, I am not gonna go waste my time and talk about those because in my opinion these are the cars that I know that has the best handling in Goliath um, I understand some of them are not always the best cars is but really what really matters most is your driving skills uh, sometimes it may ha it may have certain cases that your car may be in the cost to uh, being best handling and stuff like that but to tell you the truth what really matters most is your driving skills I've actually won multiple races on that S class NSX against R1s and I totally did beat Bugattis in that car so there you guys have it hope that helped for you guys see you guys next time